chapter twenty two of the forbidden way by george gibbs this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by tony oliva private matters jeff followed camilla's departing back with blank bewilderment too amazed to utter a word rita cheyne looked at jeff's face and then laughed act three will now begin she said gaily it's really too good jeff but it's time for the lady villain to die i'm off stage now so good-bye she gave him her hand and he took it mechanically i'll see you to-morrow he said gravely no this is good-bye there isn't any to-morrow for us i won't see you jeff i think perhaps you won't want to see me now this will make no difference he stammered don't you see i've got to make her understand you mean my reputation she'd never understand that you'll be wasting time don't bother i'm going to denver in the morning no not a word he tried to hold her but the clerk came down at this moment so with a last flourish of the hand she sped past him and up the stairs jeff stood for a moment in the middle of the floor irresolute then he turned to the desk and asked the number of mrs ray's room parlor b mr ray but she told me to say that she did not want to be disturbed jeff hesitated and then with a frown that doesn't matter he growled i'll explain i'm going up and he made his way to the stairs the room he remembered was at the front of the house he had occupied it before they built his sleeping quarters in the office building he found the door readily and knocked but there was no response he knocked again this time her voice inquired it's jeff camilla he said i must see you at once let me in please another long pause of indecision he might have been mistaken but he fancied he could hear rita cheyne's light laugh somewhere down the corridor he did not want a scene as yet his and camilla's misfortunes had not reached the ears of mesa city he was still debating whether he would knock again or go away when the key turned in the lock and the door was opened come in said camilla and he entered she had removed her hat and the bed and pillow already bore traces of her weight i'm sorry to intrude he began awkwardly shut the door she suggested perhaps it's just as well that people here shouldn't know any more of our private affairs than is necessary he obeyed and turned the key in the lock his wife had moved to the window and stood very straight and pale waiting for him to speak she seemed if anything slimmer than when he had seen her last and her hair which had fallen loosely about her shoulders was burnished with the last warm glow from sawatch peak he had never thought her more beautiful but there were lines at her eyes and mouth which the growing shadows of the room made deeper i suppose you're willing to believe the worst of me he began and of her perhaps i ought to tell you first that she only came here this morning that she's going away to-morrow it isn't necessary to explain she interrupted i hope mrs cheyne won't go on my account i'm going too in the morning under the circumstances i'm sorry i couldn't have waited a day or two but i had to see you at once you had to see me has something gone wrong in new york what is oh no wearily everything in new york is all right i've had everything packed in boxes and have given up the apartment at the hotel jeff's brows tangled in mystification you've given up the apartment why i'm not going to live there any more i'm going to kansas to abilene i'm very tired jeff and i need a rest camilla he pushed an armchair toward her and made her sit you do look as if you you're not sick are you oh no just tired of everything her voice was low as it always had been but it had no life in it just tired of being misunderstood i won't explain 
i don't expect you to i couldn't listen if you did i came here because i had to come because no matter what our relations are it was my duty to see you at once and tell you something of the greatest importance he stood behind her chair his fingers close to her pallid cheeks gently brushed by the filaments of her hair the perfume of which reached him like some sweet memory he leaned over her aching for some token that would let him take her in his arms and forget all the shadows that had for so long hung about them but as she spoke he straightened glowering at the wall beyond her it isn't it's nothing to do with you and court bent oh no not at all i haven't seen court for some time it's about about the general general bent jeff gave a quick sigh paced across the room and then turned with a frown i'm not interested in general bent he muttered for me he has stopped being a person he's only a piece of machinery a steel octopus that's slowly crushing me to bits i'd rather not talk of general bent is it as bad as that she murmured awe-stricken yes they've pushed me to the wall i'm still fighting but unless i compromise or sell the mine he stopped and straightened his great frame camilla don't let's talk of this i know you're tired i won't stay long just tell me what you mean about going back to abilene she clasped her hands nervously glad of the chance to postpone her revelation which seemed to grow more difficult with each moment i can't stand the life i'm living jeff i can't take any more from you i've done it all spring because you wanted me to but i can't live a lie any longer those rooms that luxury the servants the people about me they oppressed me and bore me to the earth i have no right to them still less now that things are going badly with you you wanted me to keep the place we'd made to make a larger place for your name in new york i hope i've made it but it has cost me something i'm sick of ambition of the soulless striving the emptiness of it all i can't do it any longer i must go somewhere where i can be myself where i don't have to knuckle to people i despise where i don't have to climb 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 my ears deaf to the sneers and the envy of the scandal-mongers and open only for the flattery which soothes my self-esteem but not no nothing can soothe the ache at the heart what has happened camilla i understood you had made many new friends yes some new friends also some new enemies but that hasn't bothered me it's the lying i had to do about you the excuses i have had to make for being alone the dates i have set for your return lies all lies when i knew you were not going to return that you had deserted me and left me only your money as a bribe i couldn't do it any longer i wrote you all this you thought i didn't mean what i said because i had your money your merciless money to gratify my pride in my pretty body it has come to the point where your money is an insult as much of an insult as the dishonor you put on me dishonor i can't have you associate that name with mrs cheyne he blurted forth she smiled and then gave a hard dry little unmirthful laugh oh you mistake my meaning i wasn't thinking of mrs cheyne i was selfish enough to be still thinking of myself i don't understand she got up and walked to the window leaning her face against the pane to soothe with its coolness the heat of her brow i was thinking of my own dishonor not yours i have nothing to do with yours to be doubted as you have doubted me to know that you could believe me capable of dishonoring you that is dishonor enough you mustn't forget that you gave me cause he said hoarsely what kind of man do you think i am you married me for a whim because another man wouldn't have you i forgave you that because i was willing to take you at any price that was my fault as much as yours it was what came after he came up behind her his voice trembling but suppressed do you think 
i'm the kind of man to tolerate the things between you and court bent i was a fool once i believed in you i thought no matter how little love you had in your heart for me that you'd have enough respect for yourself do you think i could stand knowing that my servants had seen you in his arms she flashed around at him breathless paler than ever clutching at the window-sill behind her for support who who told you this greer my valet at the hotel he snarled when i discharged him and came here he said jeff caught her by the elbows brutally and held her so that he could look into her eyes it's true isn't it answer me she gazed at him wide-eyed and now for the first time he saw how ill she looked even at that moment he was sure that pity and love and a desire for possession were still the feelings that dominated him she could not stand the gaze of his eyes they seemed to burn through her so she lowered her head yes she admitted brokenly it's true i was in his arms a sound came from his throat a guttural sound half choked in the utterance as he dropped her turned violently and in a stride was at the door but as the key turned in the lock she started forward and clutched him by the sleeve wait she whispered piteously you must you can't go now you've got to know everything i think i've had enough i'm going he turned the knob and opened the door but she leaned against it and pushed it shut you've got to listen i have some right still the right every woman has to defend her name if she can he sneered i can i will will you listen he shrugged his shoulders and walked past her to the window camilla faced him beginning slowly breathlessly it was when we first came to new york that it began that day when you and your you and general bent came in from downtown cortland was there i i thought i had forgotten him i was happy with you i was beginning to believe that after all we hadn't made a mistake but you were away all day and i was lonely the city was so vast so unfriendly i had no right to be lonely but i was i was bewildered by all the magnificence and homesick for mesa city that day court bent came in and i had a fit of the blues he brought back all the old story and told me how you stole the mine jeff laughed aloud so he told you that did he for sympathy he sneered it revolted me she persisted it revolts me still i was new to modern business methods then i can't like them now but i've learned to keep silent he asked me to forgive him the past and i did the spell of romance was over me still he told me that he loved me more than ever and that he would not give me up i thought i thought i loved him too you thought you knew he said immoderately you've always loved him no no it wasn't that she pleaded it wasn't love jeff i learned that soon enough it was only pity and where was your pity for me don't jeff let me finish whatever my feelings for you then whatever they are now i was true to you in word and deed when you were in his arms he laughed harshly he took me in his arms he tried to kiss me on the lips but i would not let him i've never let him i broke away and threatened to ring if he followed me and then and then you came in that's all jeff all and it's the truth she faced him bravely her eyes seeking his he glared at her madly but could not stare her down it was one of those tragic moments when all the future hangs on the flicker of an eyelash jeff's gaze fell first i would have come back here she went on i asked you to leave new york with me you wouldn't go instead of that you threw us together more and more why i don't know unless it was because you did not care i did care he muttered you did not care she insisted you had met rita Chane then it was because she saw what i did he asserted it was because 
don't explain she said i'm not asking you to explain or to exonerate her it's too late for that but i cannot bear to have you think such dreadful things about me cruel things things that hurt hurt me here she put her hand to her breast and swayed he sprang to her side and caught her in his arms as she fell lifting her like a child and carrying her to the bed terror-stricken at the coldness of her hands and face he rang the bell and then with bungling fingers loosened her collar and dress whimpering the while like a child camilla my girl don't look so white open your eyes i believe you dearie i've always believed you look at me camilla i know you're straight i didn't mean it i was cruel to you i wouldn't hurt you for the world i love you you're my girl my girl there was a commotion at the door of the adjoining room which suddenly flew open and a figure in a trailing silk kimono glided in pushed him aside abruptly and put a silver brandy flask to camilla's lips it was mrs cheyne i was next door she explained jerkily i heard i couldn't help it the partitions are so thin and then with sudden authority don't stand there like a fool bring some water quickly and when he had obeyed now bathe her temples and give her brandy she'll be all right in a minute when i go get a light but she mustn't see me here and before he was even aware of it she had vanished like a wraith the housemaid brought a lamp put it on the table and hovered anxiously in the background but camilla's eyes had opened mrs ray is sick jeff began but camilla had already drawn herself up on one elbow and gently pushed him away i-i'm all right now i can't imagine what made me feel so queerly i've never been i've never fainted before a little more brandy no not now who wasn't there someone else in here i thought i saw someone in pink and smelled a perfume i must have been dreaming lie back on the pillow and rest camilla dear you're played out the doctor will be here in a minute i don't want a doctor i'm all right with an effort she straightened and sat on the side of the bed i remember i was telling you don't camilla i don't want to hear i believe you it's all a mistake he bent over her and tried to take her in his arms but she held up her hand and gently restrained him no no she said shaking her head don't try to soothe me that doesn't mean anything i know shadows like these are not brushed away so quickly sit there jeff by the window and listen there's something else i must tell you i should have told you at once it's what i came here for but i didn't seem to have the courage no not to-night i must it won't keep you must listen her eyes pleaded and so he sank into the rocking-chair leaning forward eagerly she took up the handbag beside her on the table and fumbled tremblingly at the lock it's something which concerns general bent and you no not business jeff something personal something dreadfully personal which has nothing whatever to do with your business relations and yet something which seems to make your hatred of each other all the more terrible it seems very hard for me to tell you because it's something you have never liked to speak about something that has always made you very unhappy why what do you mean camilla he asked you must let me tell you in my own way because it will be hard for you to realize i must show you that there is no mistake no chance of a mistake jeff two weeks ago at the hotel in new york i was reading the letters in the old tin box and looking at the photographs they were in the drawer of your desk i've never spoken of them to you or looked at them since we were married but you were not there to see them and i-i didn't think you'd mind i had them on your desk when mrs rumson came in she saw the photograph of your father she-she had one just like it in her album at home she knew him then eagerly yes i brought both photographs with me she took them out of the handbag with trembling hands and gave them to him 
he got up took them to the light and held them side by side yes yes he muttered they are the same the very same there's no doubt about that and then in a suppressed voice you know who he is yes jeff mrs rumson and i know no one else not a soul else it's your secret we couldn't tell no one can or will but you her voice had sunk almost to a whisper it's it's the general jeff general bent outwardly jeff gave no sign of unusual disturbance a slight tightening of his thumbs upon the pictures a slight bending of the head that his eyes might be surer of their vision but to camilla who was watching him timidly he seemed to grow compact his big frame to shrink into itself and his eyes to glow with a strange unfamiliar fire general bent general bent he repeated the words huskily as if they were a formula which he was trying to commit to memory it can't be true yes jeff it's true mrs rumson identified the letters there's no doubt none i can't believe why i'd have felt it camilla i've always said i'd know him if i saw him you didn't but have you thought you look like him jeff you look like him yes it's strange i didn't think of that and then suddenly does he know no he won't unless you tell him he looked up at her with dumb uncomprehending eyes and sank in his chair again still grasping the photographs i must think he groaned i've got to think what to do i've hated him so all these long years i hate him now not because he's my my father but because he he's himself stop jeff you mustn't you mustn't speak so it's true raising his bloodshot eyes to hers why should i care did he care for the atom he's put into the world to float about without a name to land on any dunghill i'll pay him back for that by god i'm not his son the only thing i want of his blood is his cruelty i'll take that and use it when i can on him and his you mustn't jeff it's horrible i can't stand hearing this at the touch of her hand he stopped got up and paced the length of the room and back again in grim silence his lips working while she watched him fearful of another outburst i must think this thing out camilla by myself i don't know what i'll do and then suddenly where is he now he asked harshly in denver at the brown palace hotel they came west before i did with the janeys gretchen and mrs rumson they came in a private car to be in at my finish he muttered bitterly i can't seem to think camilla it's all so monstrous it staggers me he stopped pacing the floor and looked at her suddenly realizing how ill she had been and contrite and self-accusing he fell on his knees at her feet and put his arms around her camilla i shouldn't have let you tell me all this to-night you are not strong enough i've been brutal to you to forget what you were suffering you must sleep my heart has been aching for you all these long months i'll take care of you and make you strong and well again you're not going back to abilene camilla slowly she disengaged her hands you must go now jeff i-i am tired but all i need is rest i couldn't have slept until i told you it has preyed on me like a poison i can't influence you though you must use your own judgment as to what you'll do but i pray you'll do nothing rash you must not go back to abilene there's much to be explained camilla you must promise not to go away i want to speak to you about rita cheyne she rose from her seat on the bed with a kind of wistful dignity i can't promise anything jeff go please i want to be alone he looked at her a moment pleading and then turned without a word and went out she heard his heavy steps go down the noisy hall heard them again on the porch below 
and on the boardwalk through the village until they were engulfed in the gloom of the night jeff's night of anguish battle and temptation End of chapter twenty two